It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Helping Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is retirement living. Joining me is Stacy Clark, registered nurse and executive director of the Fountains of Melbourne, Florida. Welcome, Stacy. Thank you. Thanks, I'm sir. glad to have you here. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. But I want to tell you, readers, I, I have a, a, an extra special fondness for the fountains that you will see for yourself as we develop our conversation this morning because I happen to know an awful lot about the fountains. I've known about them since they were first built. I've followed them all for many years, and I think that you will be as pleased to watch and listen to what Stacy and I are gonna talk about as it is for me to talk to you, Stacy, about it today. Thank you. So, just exactly what is the fountain, Stacy? What is it? The Fountains of Melbourne is an independent and assisted living community we have 265 apartments. All of them are full size with kitchens and they come in one bedroom, two bedroom, various different floor plans. And we provide um, personalized senior living. If somebody wants to bring their furniture, can they bring their furniture? They absolutely can. It's your home. It's your apartment. You bring your things from your home that you're transitioning from. And we treat it like that. Our staff don't wear scrubs. You won't find it like a hospital feeling or a clinical setting it's very home-like and we're just there to provide you support in your home your people don't wear scrubs any place in the building no no we don't that's interesting yeah the uh, how long has the fountains been around the fountains was actually built in 1988 so yeah. it's going in its 26th year but it doesn't look like it's 26 years old it doesn't we just finished a major renovation inside um, in the common areas in the dining room was just expanded, so you'll have to come check it out. You know, people think about retirement living, we talk about uh, a place to live, mm -hmm. but a community like the Fountains has been my experience of the people I have known and know that live there, it's more than just a place to live. And, and that's, to me, that's what separates uh, quality retirement community living facilities from just retirement living facilities. And perhaps you can help our viewers understand a little bit about what, what I'm trying to talk about. You experience it every day. Mm -hmm. We recognize that when you get to a point in your life that you have to make a change from living at home. And that could be something as simple as just having somebody make meals. It, it's taxing to get up and make meals every day or getting support with housekeeping or having your bed linens changed once a week, or just having socialization, having people there to talk to. We recognize that when you get to that point, changing from leaving your home is very difficult. It would be for anybody, but if you've lived in your home for 40, 50, 60 years, it's very hard to do. And so we recognize from the very beginning that when you walk through our door, we want you to feel welcome, we want you to feel warm, and it should be a friendly environment. And then we try to, throughout the whole process, Whole, kind of help you understand what you're going to expect, how long the transition is going to take, and we really try to make it so that it's not stressful for you. We, we understand it's very difficult. It's one of the hardest transitions you'll make. You know what the real hard transition is? I'm a senior. The hard transition, probably in my case, is to convince myself to give up a lot of the stuff we have in our house, but also to convince my wife to give it all up. <laughs> and But we dearly love our things. Mm -hmm. Our things, are the, they're not just a possession. Um, I had, a, 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 one of my very favorite nieces and her husband spent some time with us recently. And when they got back home, they told their dad, my brother, how much they enjoyed being in our home. And they were sit, we spent part of the time sitting in my office with all my, it's my, mm -hmm. some, one of the, one of the guys that gave me a sign, he said, my love, my, I love me room. <laughs> But it's, it's my life. Right. And, and, the, and the kids, every time they come down, 
they want me to tell them stories mm -hmm. about what I did and what Terry did. And, and, and I know for a fact that that type of same type of thing exists in the fountains. Mm -hmm. we, you do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about having, I know a, a lady in town that is starting a nonprofit organization where she's going to film people's lives. We actually have a writing your life class. So once a week, our residents get together and we have something that helps facilitate it, but we do an actual tell us about your life. We realize that in our community alone, there are some phenomenal stories. And I say there's history there that I never even learned as a, as a child in school or that my children will ever learn. They could hear it firsthand from my residents. And we actually have several of our residents that have gone and spoken to some of the public school system and been in some of the high schools and shared their stories with those students. And we are, you're right, it's, it's something that's very important and it's something that we can then capture. When you move in the fountains, you bring your things with, it, with you. And we want to know what your life is like and where did you grow up and what did you do. And um, because you have a spacious apartment, you can bring that with you and you personalize it the way you want to. But have you ever thought about getting those residents to tell their story to a camera? We have not. I mean, we had a couple of times where they did like video recording. You know, they, they bring the recorders and they yeah. can tape but that. But that's what this lady is. I'm gonna, that's I, interesting. I will make sure you have this lady's name. Okay. Her, name, her first name is Molly, but I'll get Molly to call okay. you because it's, uh, she's, she wants to meet with me and film my life story. And uh, I've had several people do that. I would but like that. I think it's important for people in the community to know more about what what people's lives have been, what they mean, and why it's important to retain memories. And that's mm -hmm. one of the things I think you do at the fountain, especially in your dining room. Mm -hmm. You have a beautiful dining room, and I don't know if you still have the same chef or not. Mm -mm. Got a different no. one? No, but we still have all day dining. You can you come and go as you please and eat when you want. There's over 26 meal choices a day that you can choose from. You can eat light, you can eat a little heavier, you can choose what you want to eat. You don't have a meal setting anymore? No, it's actually an open restaurant style all day from seven in the morning to seven at night. Made to order breakfast and then a lunch and dinner choice from 11 till seven. All retirement community living facilities are not like that. No, some of them are. Some of them have all day dining and then others offer two to three choices for each meal. Do you know if they have rum raisin ice cream on the menu? <laughs> they don't, but they we don't? could get it. We could get it. <laughs> <laughs> Moose <laughs> Tracks is the favorite. Which is? Moose Tracks. It's Moose got tracks. peanut butter cups and yeah. Okay. You know, we, we can joke about this, folks, but for older people, for seniors, mm -hmm. dining is an extremely important part of our lives for several reasons. You have to eat wisely and correctly to get the nutritional value. You have to eat wisely and correctly so that you don't gain too much weight. Mm -hmm. But you also need to do this because you want to enjoy what mm -hmm. you eat. And if you're in a pleasant setting, the atmosphere is conducive to enjoying your meal, you've got a win-win situation. And it's important for senior living um, communities to really stress great dining options because the reality is there's a ton of amenities in every senior living community. Your typical bingo, your, you know, some of them have pools, they do water aerobics, they have fitness classes. But the one commonality for every resident that lives at the fountains is they like to eat. Everybody eats. Yeah. So it's important for me to make sure that there's enough variety and enough options for every senior that lives at the fountains so that they can find something that they enjoy, as most communities do. Do you find that getting a senior citizen to drink a lot of water is a difficult task? It is very difficult. Why is it? I hate to drink water myself. I'll admit it. <laughs> I don't like to drink water. You don't like to drink water? I don't either. either. I don't. Our middle daughter is a nurse, and she always says, Dad, you need to drink more water. She's also one of these Juice Plus distributors, and mm -hmm. she very firmly believes in uh, the value of Juice Plus. However, I've seen a lot of testimonials to the value of Juice Plus, too. So it's mm -hmm. not something that you can you know, pass off lightly these supplements. Some of them are pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. I tell my residents all the time, you know, a lot of them carry those insulated cups with the straw. You know, they'll put them, yeah. they'll have them in their apartment or they'll bring them down with them. And then I always tell them, if you're eating fresh fruits and you're eating fresh vegetables, 
it, some of that breaks down into water too. So you are consuming um, some water through your food. Um, but yes, it is very difficult. But you're also a registered nurse, Stacy. So that makes, you, you bring a set of credentials to the job of executive director of a, of, of a retirement community that I think more and more retirement communities are probably having registered nurses as executive directors as part of their background makeup to be the director. Am I, is that a pretty good assumption? I would say probably more in the assisted living um, portion or assisted living side. It's Most of the time it is a registered nurse or a licensed practical nurse that's in charge of the assisted living. But in the executive director role, I don't find that there is as many that are nurses. Um, it's more of a business background. Let's talk just for a second about licenses. What set the fountain apart? You know, I always speak about what I call elements of care. We got have, have daycare, home care, assisted living care, retirement community care, nursing home care, mm -hmm. then hospice care. And if we're fortunate as we live our lives, if we need any element of care, we're able to access that element of care to make it easier on us and those that love us and care for us. You, ha you know, you can fight for so long. At times, other elements of care have to be brought in right. to serve people. Where does the fountain fit in this element of care progression? The Fountains offers the independent and assisted living. We don't have a designated dementia care unit or Alzheimer's unit, which would be a locked facility typically. It has its own dining room, its own activity space. It's really designed for those residents that can no longer live in an environment that's not restricted. They need a little bit more um, supervision and they definitely need that, that level of safety. Um, okay. The Fountains has independent living, which is strictly that. It's, in, it's no different than you living in your home because you can come and go as you please. You have a full-size apartment, but you're getting some supportive services. You're getting your two meals a day. You're getting... Um, transportation provided if you wanted that seven days a week. You're getting um, your, your apartment cleaned once a week and your towels and linens are refreshed. You're getting kind of that level of support that just allows you to continue your independence. At the point where you start needing assistance with medical needs or medications or just some minor assistance with bathing or dressing because of a physical ailment or sometimes because of a, a you know, a little bit of confusion. Right. There is the option to do assisted living, which offers then that ad added layer of support, which is more of the personal hands-on care. But can, but can you, can your nursing staff, or the staff that does the assisted living care, can it come in in your apartment till? Do, do you have a way to sort of to, to enable, bridge the gap, kind of? Yeah. There is that? no. We can't go into by licensing and by state law. We couldn't go into independent living with our staff, but we have resources, be it home care resources or other companies that we work with. And the Fountains actually has a home care piece as well. Kisco Senior Living owns one, where we can send staff into your apartment in independent living. It's just not part of the assisted living. Okay, but then it comes to a point where it's no longer safe to keep them in the independent living. You can move them to your assisted care mm -hmm. section. Mm -hmm. What kind of care can the fountains provide to somebody that's in the assisted care at, that maybe it really needs nursing home care? Can you can you do some nursing home type care in that assisted living legally? By law, you can't provide nursing home care. But what we try to do is maintain the fountains' philosophy is maintain an, a level of wellness throughout your stay at the fountain. So whether you move in an independent living and transition all the way through, or you move into assisted living and transition, we really try to make sure that you have all the resources in place and we try to maintain your independence. At the point where you can no longer care for yourself completely, or you may need nursing home care, we bring in hospice. They work with us very well. It doesn't necessarily mean the six months period. It's just a supportive layer that we put on top of what we provide that allows you to stay in an assisted living environment where we can still provide some of those care. Um, so you have nurses available through the hospice. It's kind of, it's just an additional layer of care. Okay. Can the hospice care be administered in the independent section Absolutely. Also? So a person, so if they got sick, they wouldn't have to be moved. 
correct. To assisted living. And because I've been with the fountain 17 years and much of my staff is tenured, my sales team has been there 8, 9, 10, 12 years. Um, we have housekeepers that have been there since the building opened in 1988. So our level of support, we, we kind of have learned a lot through those years. And so we really try to support you as the resident or your families in that process. So when we start identifying that there are some things going on or you need some more support, we'll okay. give you your options and say this makes the most sense. What you're saying is that by virtue of the fact that you you know your residents. Absolutely. And you can anticipate their needs a little bit. You have the experience in seeing that maybe some of these things are, how about stroke victims? Can you, if a person has a stroke, can you still take care of them at the fountains? We can, okay. it depends on, you know, kind of after they've gone through the rehab, you know, yeah. what those okay. limitations are. But we have a, a wellness program. We believe that wellness has a lot of dimensions. It's not just the physical dimension. It's your spiritual dimension, the social, the emotional, the vocational, the intellectual. So our wellness calendar speaks to all of that, but so does the way we treat and take care of our residents. So if, if you weren't coming to the dining room for breakfast and you normally come every day, somebody on my staff is going to find, try to find out where Joe is because we know you normally come. We might give you a phone call, we might visit you, but we wanna make sure that you're okay. A lot of times we've found residents that act, you know, fell and had been there in independent living. So we do know our residents personally. I always try to greet every resident by name, as does my staff. I, uh, I, I sense exactly what Stacey's talking about, folks, because my last job in the Navy I had command of the Navy's retirement home, and I had 550 residents. And when I started out, we had a post office, and they, all the residents would come down and line up in the lobby, and five or six of the residents would pass out the mail to everybody. So I went in there, and I learned mm -hmm. the names of all my residents. And I had a picture book, and I had pictures of every resident. And once once I knew that I could pick that resident out of the, of the whole mass, I circled it. And I put it in our plan of the day, I would put a number. And a resident came and asked me, what is that number, Captain, that's in, in, the, in the plan of the day? And I said, when I'm ready to tell you, I'll tell you. I did. Once I knew, I knew for a fact, I knew my 550 people by sight, and that caused me to learn some more about, and that's when I found out one of the greatest mistakes I made in my whole career in the service, Stacy, was I failed to record the life stories of those people. I have a hanging file of letters that thick in one of my file drawers at home of people that I knew at the Naval Home. I, it's amazing. One of my residents was, was a man that flew off the, air, the Navy's first aircraft carrier, the USS Langley, in San wow. Francisco Bay. I had a guy, I had two women that served in World War II and World War I. Wow. And, and then it was another lady that used to join them every night before dinner for cocktails in what we call Fiddler's Green. It was our bar. We had our own bar. <laughs> but it was a way of life. Right. And we, you do the same thing at the fountains. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we've talked about uh, what are some of the questions that, as a director, that you think people should ask if they're contemplating going into a retirement community, what should people be looking for? The first thing I think is um, sometimes we think, I'm not ready. I'm not old enough. And my philosophy at the Fountains is we want you to make that transition while you're still able. We want you to be able to enjoy the amenities and be able to do the fitness classes and get out on the day trips and things like that. It's harder sometimes when you wait for that catastrophic event to happen in your home, yeah. be it a stroke, be it a fall, be it a heart attack, something that then causes you to say, I can't live here anymore. Because now you're kind of on a recovery path and we're trying to help you get back to where you were before. So it's almost easier while you can get out there and look for those places. There's a lot of them in Brevard County, a lot of choices. A lot of the questions that I tell people to ask is, um, what do I get for the cost? You know, the misconception is senior living costs a lot of money. It does cost a lot of money. Independent living and assisted living ranges anywhere from $2,500 to $4,000 a month, depending on where you go. But when you look at what you pay for your home, 
some people's homes are paid for, some aren't, but you look at what you pay in insurance. You look at what you pay for maybe pool service or lawn maintenance and housekeeping and what you pay in groceries and having somebody come cook your meals or all those things. It kind of offsets some of that cost. But every community offers something different. But look at what you're getting for that. What's most important to you? I always tell people, before you even go look, make yourself a list. If I'm going to live somewhere, these are the things that are most important. Those are your non-negotiables. I want them to have a pool. I want them to take pets. I want them to allow me to smoke. Do you smoke. take pets We do. Homes? We do. Cats, dogs, birds. Great big dogs? No, under 25 pounds. <laughs> under 25? Yeah. I didn't even think of that, but that, <clears throat> once you said dogs, I haven't You have to be able to walk it, so we don't want the dog to walk you, you know? <laughs> We um, were right in front of our house talking, uh, and one of the neighbors came by with two Rottweilers. Oh. They're huge, strong dogs. And I think people that own animals like that don't realize mm -mm. how strong those dogs are. And they jump up on people, and it, it doesn't take much to scratch a senior citizen and no. put a real bad blood burst mm -hmm. on it. But, you know, you mentioned money. I, uh, I remember years ago, a good friend of ours was looking for a place to live. And she selected the fountains. And I think it was, her cost was $21 or $2,200 a month. Mm -hmm. There were no upfront fees. Right. Straight $21 or $2,200 a month. She got her food. She didn't have to worry about insurance. She didn't have to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. It's all paid for. Right. And she didn't think she could afford it. But she could afford it. Mm -hmm. Affording something, is sometimes a lot more than just what's it going to cost me out of my back pocket? What's it going to cost me up here right. and in here? Right. It makes all the difference in the world. And I remember that uh, when my wife and I would go visit her, my wife used to take this lady to see her husband in a, in a, in a nursing home who had, had dementia. It used to take a woman two and a half hours to go from Satellite Beach mm -hmm. via the bus system that we have. Mm -hmm to the nursing home, another two and a half hours, and five hours a day she was on the bus. Wow. So Terry would take her to the nursing home, stay with her. She knew the, knew, knew the, the husband. But the woman used to, at, at one of the front rooms there at the fountains, and she always knew what time we were coming. She'd be sitting on her porch, watching us as we drove in, park, watch us walk in, and then when we would leave, we'd look through the back window, and there would be Lena. Now, do you remember Lena? I don't uh, know if I do or not. Uh, uh, I can't think of her like Lena's last name. She's been dead a number of years, but I bet she would have you know. But she found a next door neighbor that became an extremely good friend. Mm -hmm. Lena had a reason for getting up in the morning. They would go eat breakfast, mm -hmm. and and she found people that she found pretentious people, but she found other people that were just average people. You find what you want to find, and the same thing that you can find out of the fountains, correct? Mm -hmm. We try to make sure that when you move into the fountains, we try to find out what you like, what you don't like. Again, going back to what you did in your life, you know, that plays a huge part of it, whether you were military or you, we try to find those affiliations. And then the biggest thing for us at the fountains is creating those friendships. You know, our principles and values that we, we manage by, um, we really want there to be a um, unique, warm, friendly environment. And we want you to find a sense of purpose. Everybody needs to wake up in the morning and know, this is what I'm doing today. This is what I'm meant to do today. Whether it's volunteering to read to children um, that come into the community, or it's writing letters. We have a, a letter writing that we do letter writing to our soldiers, or whether it's um, stuffing our newsletters that go to our residents every month, or there's lots of opportunities. Putting our flowers together that go on the tables every week. We try to make sure that there is a sense of purpose for everybody. Do you have travel clubs or things that they can be, be part of? We actually are starting a travel log series in March. Going to, that'll be our first one this year, which will be focused on Ireland uh, with St. Patty's Day and everything. But we do have day trips that our residents sign up for and go out of the building. They, the, 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 there's one this month, I believe. They're going to um, Winter Park uh, where the residents sign up and they just go for the day. Um, lots of different opportunities like that. My wife and I went on a trip to Ireland as part of a, thing, a, a religious pilgrimage, and a priest at Meredith was on the pilgrimage. I think he knew every Irishman in every town we stopped. He was Irish. Wow. But he knew everybody. Everybody knew Father John. But, you know, 
just because you get older doesn't mean you have to stop enjoying life. Mm -hmm. And I think a big part of the equation in successful senior living is to find a place that we enjoy being. Mm -hmm. And what other comment would you give on this television show to seniors about? I would say once you've made your list and you know what your non-negotiables are, I would say get out there and start exploring. There's so many of them. Um, but you want to look for, you know, tenured staff. You want to look for the warmness. I always tell people, you'll know. When you walk in the door, you'll have that feeling that this is where I'm supposed to be. You'll, you'll know. The fountains isn't right for everybody. But I would tell you, don't ever think that senior living is too expensive. You need to get in there and find out what do you get for that. And there may be opportunities, whether it be funding or opportunities for you to be able to, to better afford it. So don't just think, senior living is expensive, I, I can't afford it, I'm, you know, I'm not going to do that. Um, and then the other thing would be just don't wait. It's, a, it's the next phase of your life, and there's so much to be enjoyed in senior living when you find the right place. If I could get rid of all the things that I have, maybe I could enjoy it more. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, uh, in a way, though, I'm not kidding because um, we unnecessarily build pressures mm -hmm. in our lives that we don't have to build. And what you're saying, Stacy, is that if you do a little exploration, you might find a way to take some of that pressure off yourself. Absolutely. I want to thank you for being here with me today. I've sure enjoyed talking to you. And uh, I encourage people to go to the fountains and take a look. Thank you, Jim. I want to thank you, Vera, for watching today's episode of Helping Seniors of Broad County.